Hey, what's up everybody? Batjack JW coming at you right here. And uh, this is a special video right here. I'm going to talk a little bit about some things, uh, movies and guns and what they've uh, kind of done for me growing up. This actually is for Lion Quest Fitness, Greg uh, over there. Uh, left me a comment and this was a comment off of one of the JW's radios and it says well we were talking in that one and there's a lot of truth to this comment and it has a lot of rele relevance to this video okay and it says we are just a bunch of uh, growing up kids um, there's a lot of truth to that and ain't that the truth that's exactly his words and on a serious note he does miss the guns the history movie tie-ins and stuff okay well, Greg, I'm going to talk to you and the rest of you guys about some of the things that, I guess, movie-related guns that are tie-ins for me. And I had to drag out my reloading bench here just to put some stuff on there. Uh, so, pardon the giant uh, Lee turret press in the way. By the way, it's a great press. I've been enjoying it. As a fellow that's been using the Dylan 650 for a long time, I'm probably going to fire that thing up in the future. But uh, for now, I've been running the turret press and enjoying it okay far back as I remember these types of movies changed my life uh, growing up with John Wayne and Steve McQueen and Lee Marvin Chuck Norris and all those guys uh, growing up with that stuff really had a big impact to me and I owe that to my father uh, my father when I was at a young age very very young age instead of watching cartoons uh, which I did that too but um, <laughs> we also were watching Dirty Harry and uh, James Bond and, uh, of course, the original James Bond stuff, uh, Sean Connery and Roger Moore, that kind of thing. All right, so I think most of us know that uh, it's because of James Bond is why a lot of us know the PPK or the Walther PPK and want the Walther PPK. I myself want a Walther P99 because of uh, Tomorrow Never Dies with uh, Pierce Brosnan and such but uh, no there's no joke that I definitely own the PPK because of James Bond because I saw Dr. No one too many times uh, movies such as Steve McQueen and a bullet and what that did for me which was wanting a 1897 Winchester shotgun because of that movie uh, the getaway with Steve McQueen that one and then of course John Wayne I grew up watching John Wayne a lot and that really just Ever since I first saw it, I had to have my own six gun with the age yellow ivory type style grips on there because that's what he is known for having in all of his films pretty much from the mid 60s and on. That's his iconic uh, look right there. And being a guy that I am, got really obsessed with things and uh, I wound up uh, making my own. As you guys been around my channel a lot, if you've been hanging around the channel, seeing a lot of the videos, you know I've custom made those grips and it took me a long time to get it down but I wound up doing it anyway so stuff like uh, a recent acquire a Winchester Defender shotgun right here although not the same one that uh, Steve McQueen used in the getaway which is the K1200 uh, high standard Riot King I believe they call it or Sport King Riot, Riot gun or something but this is a very similar shotgun when I saw this, I just had to have it. It's uh, the classic style that I like, the wood and blued steel. Uh, nice big corn cob style uh, pump on it right there. Really nice, I always like that. And of course, I'm, I'm a big sucker for wood, wood and blued steel. And of course, it's a 18 and a half inch barrel. Barrel comes right up with a magazine tube. It holds about seven shells. And yeah, why did I want this thing? Because I saw the getaway a lot. And I'm still looking for the high standard. And the funny story is I actually saw one and right one before I could get my hands on it, somebody had bought it before me. Uh, the following gun show, I picked up that one because it kind of looks like it. And you can get away with being the getaway gun. <laughs> All right. So other things on here. What are the other influential movies that uh, impacted my gun buying? And honestly, I'm the kind of guy that, yes, movies do impact my gun buying a great deal. I've never been one to really buy a gun uh, just to just because it was uh, you know I guess tactical or something. <laughs> um, no, like a Model 29 Smith and Wesson, big old end frame 44 Magnum, most powerful handgun in the world, and it could blow your head clean off, as Clint Eastwood stated in Dirty Harry. 
believe it was in 1971. Boy, that changed everything for that gun. And it made the market absolutely boom with these things, literally. <laughs> unintended uh, but yes you couldn't even pick one up during after Dirty Harry came out and the prices nearly doubled uh, so a long a, a long way from what Elmer Keith did in uh, you know prior to 1955 when they first came out with them because of Elmer Keith getting together with Remington to build the cartridge and then Smith and Wesson to build the gun so uh, yeah but yeah Nobody really had an interest until uh, Old Dirty Harry came out, and of course we can thank John Milius for that. John Milius is the writer, and uh, he is one of the few left-standing pro-gun guys in Hollywood. Way to go, John Milius. And always says, what does he say about Dirty Harry? He says, what lines did you write? All the ones you remember. <laughs> okay. Um, one Another one that really sets me back a lot is the Smith & Wesson Model 10 snub. This is a pre-Model 10, and I had to figure that out and uh, learn a lot more and read some books. But uh, this is a K-Frame 6-Shot 38 Snubby by Smith & Wesson, pre-Model 10. It's got some uh, older features on it. And what is this, mo what is this movie? Uh, it's called Witness with Harrison Ford in the 80s. Ever since I saw that, and I saw this, it, it really is a whopper of a snub revolver. Uh, usually when you think of a snubby revolver, it's uh, something that you could strap to your ankle. Uh, you could strap this to your ankle, but it would be very uncomfortable because it is a bigger gun. It's a K-frame, it's a square butt, so meaning the grip right there. It's a, And it's a six shot. Most of the time it's five. You only get five, but uh, that one there is a six. That's what really drew me to it. Uh, and then, you know, of course it's size. I remember watching that movie over and over again when the uh, the Samuel Lap kid uh, pulls the thing out of the dresser and just just you know of course he's got really tiny hands he's just a kid holding this thing and it just boom it just pops on the screen it's amazing and I've always been fascinated with that and searched that searched this for a long time uh, before I bought the pre Model 10 which that's what I figured out it was later on I had a Model 10-5 now was the gun it's the gun but it there were certain features like the sights the hammer the things that just didn't add up mostly the sights mostly that barrel and that sight there was something about that that didn't add up in that movie when i started researching a little bit more found out it was a pre-model 10 a five screw those of you guys that know smith and wesson revolvers know what that five screw means um actually it uh, originally had the um the diamond checkered uh, the diamond grips on there but uh I went ahead and because in the movie for some reason it doesn't, I went ahead and found these right here in a shop. These are just some plain ones without that. I figure I store the diamond checkered grips away and keep them in good shape. I keep that one in good shape too. I don't shoot it much uh, because it's just kind of a near and dear gun to the heart kind of a thing. So that's the other thing. A lot of people would chuck the old wooden grips back in, especially back in the days of the Coke bottle grips or the end frame Smith & Wessons. Ooh boy, a lot of us. A lot of people that remember that regret getting rid of those with the prices these days. And uh, let's step a little bit to some of the, what I, well, it's about as modern as it gets for me, a Beretta, Beretta 92 FS. Uh, you know, it's a military sidearm right now, uh, but really, what does it mean to me? It means lethal weapon and die hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually done a video about that, but yes, Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, Martin Riggs or John McClane, <laughs> it really gets me. I remember seeing Die Hard 3 in the theater and just being just blown away by, I loved the fact, I mean, that, that leather shoulder holster he had in it, the dual mag pouch. Um, still to this day, I'm going to find one of those in left-handed. That's what makes it hard, being a lefty. <laughs> But uh, I do want to get one of those leather shoulder holster with dual mag pouch for my Beretta just because I want to be John McLean. Uh, and then, of course, watching the Lethal Weapon series all the time. And Mel Gibson just nails that character. And that, yep, <laughs> hard, to, hard to deny. And it's a really, um, it photographs really amazing. It always has. It's an it's a eye catcher on camera for sure. I think maybe that's why they use it a lot. Uh, moving on over, let's uh, go back a little older. A Colt Diamondback 38. He says the fellow in that uh, the front door said I had to, not the tie, Lieutenant. The Colt 
38 caliber diamond back you have tucked away in your belt. Well, I work under the Chicago Police Department, which makes it obligatory. Well, then I strongly urge you to resist any temptation to using it. I don't think I'll be needing it in here. Brannigan, John Wayne, absolutely one of my favorite uh, John Wayne movies. Uh, Brannigan, he actually steps away from being a cowboy for once, and uh, he actually is a cop. Uh, that just goes to show you John Wayne did all sorts of movies and he's probably the greatest actor around uh, that ever lived. But yes, the Colt Diamondback, I had to have it because of that movie Brannigan. If you watch just the first opening credits of the movie, uh, you, you, it's hard not to want one. <laughs> because If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But yes, I chased after that because of that movie. and. Yeah, some of these guns have gotten expensive. Uh, some of the ones that we missed, we just don't have room for on the table. Uh, like the Colt Python 4-inch barrel, Magnum Force, Dirty Harry, the sequel. I think by then, uh, that was the they already knew what worked in the movie. And they knew, they recognized that the gun was just as much of a star as Clint Eastwood, Harry Callahan himself. So, anyway, I'm going to close out this video. I just wanted to bring out some stuff, have some fun, chit-chat with you a little bit, and talk about some of the guns that influenced me and some of the movies that had quite an impact on me. And they still do. Still to this day, I tend to buy guns just because of those movies. <laughs> so, thanks for hanging out with me. And I'm Bad Jack JW. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget, if you see me around in town, always say hi. Never fear to approach. <laughs>